What's up YouTube, I'm Matador Phillip, and today I'm going to be showing you how to turn a toy rifle like this into a more realistic looking sniper rifle. Very specifically, the sniper rifle from Fallout 4. Now, it's not going to be quite to scale because this is a bit of a, a smaller toy gun, but I'm going to do the best that I can to make it look a lot better. So we're going to start off by going through and kind of sanding the outside. we got to take it apart first and make sure everything is good. I've already taken the batteries out of the back because the sound it made was very annoying. I'm also going to try to make some mods out of foam. You can see I've got the beginnings of what's going to be an extended magazine that goes into the gun like this. So hopefully that'll come out looking all right. I'm going to do a few more things like that. I'm going to try to find a way to extend the barrel right here. First things first, we got to take this thing apart, get it ready for sanding so we can repaint it. This step can vary quite a bit depending on how complex your original gun is. If you're using a cheap gun like this, which we get for $12, then you won't have much to worry about. But some larger electronic Nerf guns can get fairly complex on the inside, which means a lot more parts to worry about, especially if you still want the gun to work when you put it back together. Before we get started, grab a small cup or something for all those little screws. You really don't want to lose those. Always take pictures as you're disassembling your gun, just so you know exactly where everything went. Trust me, it saves you a ton of headaches later on. There's also a pretty big online community for modding Nerf guns, so you can most likely find some walkthroughs on how to properly take those apart if you need to. For this gun, I don't need any of the lights and sounds, so I'm just taking them out altogether. But when you're dealing with electronics, remember to always use caution, even if it's just a cheap toy. Be sure to remove the power source before you go messing with anything else. Now it's time for sanding. This part can get a little bit tedious, but it's really important. Spray paint doesn't stick very well on toy guns like this since the plastic is so smooth, but sanding it down thoroughly makes the surface a lot more porous, which means fewer headaches down the road. Now I'm sanding down my extended mag, which I made out of foam and which I'll be attaching to the gun itself after a little while. So let's move on to something more fun now, painting the gun. I've said it before, but please don't do this without a respirator, especially if your painting space is closed in like mine. Just because they don't put lead in paint anymore doesn't mean you want it in your body. You'll start with a layer of white primer, just plain primer, not paint plus primer. This forms a base that you can sand down some more if you need to, and since it's designed to be painted over, other paints grip to it really nicely. You can find all the paints that you need at most craft stores or home improvement stores. This step usually takes several coats, so be a little patient with it, and remember to hold your spray paint out at least a couple of feet. Pieces made of foam like the extended mag will probably need extra coats of primer so you can sand them down better. Once your coats of primer are dried, hit up the whole thing with a layer of black. No matter what color your gun is going to be, it will always help to have a black layer underneath. You'll want a couple coats of this as well. At this point, I painted up my mods as well, the extended mag and an old pill bottle which I'm using for the silencer. I attach those with hot glue and once they're secure, I give it a final coat of black to cover up any spots I may have missed. Alright, it's time for some dry brushing. This is my favorite part of building any prop and it's where everything comes together. Grab some dry paint brushes and some metallic acrylic paint and have at it. Brush very lightly over the surface in several coats to achieve a weathered metallic look. It can be pretty slow going, but with some patience it'll look fantastic. I'll have a video all about dry brushing coming out sometime next week, so be on the lookout for that if you want to know more about this. I still need a secondary color for the stock of my gun, but I don't have a spray can of the color I want, so I mixed my own and painted it by hand, using a combination of regular paint brushes and sponge brushes to smooth it out. Tape off the edges of any spots you're painting so you don't accidentally paint the wrong place. Once that's done, I do the same dry brushing technique, but with black this time to simulate the weathering of the wasteland. Here it is, almost complete. The dry brushing came out really well on this one, and there's just a few more details before it's ready for packs. Alright, now the rifle is finished, it's all painted and ready to go, and I, I did put a layer of lacquer over the top of it just to make sure that none of the paint comes flaking off. So let's take a look at what we've got here. I'm really happy with this. It's actually been a long time since I've done a painting of a gun. But it came out really nicely. I was particularly worried about this, about the silencer, because it's just a pill bottle and I didn't think it would look that great, but actually it looks pretty good. I'm very proud of this so far. I can, you can see I put on a couple more details. I got some duct tape kind of wrapped around the stock right here, mostly because there was a little speaker in like here, because like I said, this is a cheap gun. So there was a little speaker where like the little, uh, the little bang sound effects came out. So I really wanted to cover that. And another little detail that I put on, I took some chalk and I added these little tally marks right here. So, like I said, I covered everything with a layer of clear lacquer, which you can pick up at like craft stores and hobby stores. Uh, you should be able to find it pretty easily. Here's kind of a better look at the dry brushed metal texture that I was talking about, so you can kind of get more of a sense for what I was trying to do, because I know that sometimes in that video you can't quite see too well what I'm doing, but I am going to be making another video real soon that's all about dry brushing, so if you're interested in seeing something like that, go ahead and give this video a like so I know it. 
Also, a cool thing about this gun, I don't know if it's going to do it right now because since I've, I've done some painting on it, like the way this works, you, you're supposed to pop out the, uh, the bolt action lever and then the little fake bullet pops out. So uh, let's try it. I don't know if it still works. Yeah, it still kind of works. And that's the, the problem when you're painting cosplay props is because you have to paint them on the inside sometimes. Like, since this is a, a piece that moves, you have to paint them in several areas and sometimes that can kind of gum up the works if there are any moving parts because they're very specific. And a few layers of paint makes it just that much thicker so they can't really work together that well. But I'm still pretty happy with that because it still does what I wanted it to be able to do. So. I'm, I'm really satisfied. It's going to be a good prop for my cosplay on PAX South. Now it's time to work on everything else for that cosplay. So thank you so much for joining me for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If this was informative for you and if you enjoyed it, please leave a like down there. And if you have anything else that you want me to talk about or anything that I didn't mention about doing this right here, just leave a comment down below and I will answer you as soon as I can. Anyway, thank you guys once again for watching this video. And until next time, adios. You can see now the holster and the straps are fully assembled, the whole thing is ready to be painted. Now it's time to get down to painting, which if you want to see more details on that process, click on the annotation right here to see the video in which I painted my previous prop, or look in the description down below. Alright, it's the next day, and here are the fruits of my labor. Here's the finished holster. You can see that I got in a little bit...